back to the Blueberry Podcast. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, and today I'm just going to be teaching you all a little bit of science on how motion blur works. So I've got this digitally added car. You might not be able to tell, but I, I did add that in after the fact. Um, and the thing about motion blur that a lot of people get wrong, even on higher budget films, is the distance of which the motion blur is is sometimes too long or too short. So if we were going to go in and get some uh, Gaussian blur, and then just make it so that it's strictly vertical, so that this boy looks really fast. Look at that. I'll zoom this in a bit. But look at how fast that boy looks, right? And so the thing is, motion blur should only be about as far as how far that thing moves, if that makes sense. So if the wheel moves from right there to right there, that's as far as the motion blur should be. So if you were to go and get the motion blur, just make it so that where the wheel ends is where the motion blur is. Does that make any sense? Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. you are. Yes. OK, cool. You're like smart right now, dude. So you'll see. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Most often you'll see this on sparks that have been digitally added when someone's having a fight and then they add sparks and the camera's moving. It, the motion blur just doesn't, just doesn't work. And then you can tell instantly that it's been added. But with this technique, even if it's on a really, really bad animated car, oh thanks Eric, <laughs> it, the motion blur will be correct. Thank you, have a great day. I like some soap.